Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be uh, looking at a kind of interesting topic, uh, depending on who you are and kind of what your level of interest is, but it's something that always made me curious, and that is the different types of speeds that you're going to have to deal with in an airplane. So we're going to look at today both what indicated airspeed is, calibrated airspeed is, ground speed is, true airspeed is, and kind of the relationship between all those. You know, it's a common, a lot of misconceptions involved. So first things first, what's a speed? Uh, speed is basically how fast something is moving. Uh, again, the difference between velocity and speed is the uh, word magnitude and vector I'm sure you've heard before. So this aircraft right now has an interesting little device on board called a pitot tube, which is this little teeny tiny tube right here in the corner. What it does is it compares dynamic pressure, which is the pressure of the air hitting it in the front, versus static pressure, which is basically it's gonna get out of this little teeny tiny hole sitting here in the bottom. By comparing those pressures basically on a fixed scale, you can determine how fast the aircraft is moving through the air at sea level. You're sitting there going, wait, what? The fact of the matter is that when this aircraft is traveling, that particular indicator is going to be a victim of both temperature as well as pressure. Remember, as you climb upwards, you're going to have less air pressure and therefore it's going to impact exactly what that speed rating is going to be. As a matter of fact, this rating could technically be zero and the aircraft could still be traveling safely on account of the fact that maybe something has obstructed this or because your air pressure has gotten that low. To demonstrate the impact of this particular thing, notice by the way, it shows my airspeed is three knots even though we're not moving. Remember, true airspeed, we'll deal with that one in a minute. We're gonna look at indicated airspeed first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my weather here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out, switch back to a live weather. I'm gonna go up to my tippy top thing where it says settings. I mean, it looks pretty good right now. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and set the wind so it's directly behind us. I'm actually going to set the speed percentage here all the way to a zero because uh, we don't actually want any knots of wind here. So I'm gonna go set this to, uh, let's see, 219. It's gonna be roughly south. 219 is here. So we're gonna flip it around so it's gonna be facing this direction. Well, let's crank it up to 25 knots there. Make sure this is also facing roughly the same direction in order to make things a little bit smoother for us. Okay. So you notice this aircraft is being blown around like crazy. However, if I look at my true airspeed, I notice that it is zero. That is because this aircraft is not making any progress through the air whatsoever. So my airspeed is going to refer to how fast the aircraft is cutting through the air, taking into account things like dropping of air pressure. My ground speed is going to be indicating exactly how fast I'm moving over the ground. If there were no wind, both your ground speed as well as your true airspeed would be identical. Now, the interesting thing is your indicated airspeed is how fast the aircraft feels like it's traveling. And again, this could be completely different than your airspeed as well as your ground speed, and we'll demonstrate this in a minute. This wind now is completely behind us. It's actually right over here. And you're noticing the aircraft is bouncing around a little bit. Now, if we were to try to release the parking brake and just let this thing kind of get rolling a little bit on its own, that wind would actually start pushing us down this runway. Unfortunately, I have a little bit too much static friction here, which is kind of keeping me in place. That is not how a real airplane works at all, by the way. And because of that, you're not going to see any impact. Now, let me go ahead and re-engage the parking brake here. Now, watch what happens if I shift the wind so that it is facing us directly. Now, notice my airspeed now is jumping up to eight or nine knots. That's because the air around me is traveling eight or nine knots. Now, in the real world, this number can get pretty funky because of the fact that we don't know actually how fast we're moving here. Once we get airborne, you can see that effect a little bit more dramatically. Now, if I were to come up here and crank this up to, I don't know, let's do 45. Let's make it interesting here. We should actually start showing an indicated airspeed. Now, I find this kind of interesting, the fact that this is not visible. Oh, there it goes. Did you see it? You'll notice now that I'm actually showing an airspeed. Let me go ahead and put this up to 100% and see if I can get it to be a little less dramatic. There we go, bingo. So even though the aircraft is not even moving, we're still showing a 22 knot airspeed and a 23 knot true airspeed. However, as you can tell by looking at the window here, oh look at the windsock, oh God, we're not moving. We are completely still, even though our tools are still telling us we're going this fast. Now, as a neat little quirk here, and if you've ever tried this experiment before, this impact is so strong and so dynamic that if I were to do something very absurd, and let's say I'll bring this up to, uh, let's say, 75 knots. What do you think? What do you think? Let's do uh, 75 knots there. And let me go ahead and release the parking brake, give it full throttle. And we're just going to let it get going a little bit here. You'll notice I am ready for takeoff already. 
gonna go ahead and lift the nose up a little bit. I'll bring up my landing gear and I'll go ahead and nose over and hold it steady at about 75. I'm actually gonna pause real quick. Go to this. I just wanna check to make sure my altitudes are okay here. Cause that is my ground level speed. Yeah, indeed it is. All right, let me go ahead and unpause. Now you can do this neat little trick where basically even though the aircraft is pointing at the wind and I'm showing a really, really high indicated airspeed, if I were to actually push the nose of the aircraft down, you'll notice I am not going that fast. I'm actually gonna pause real quickly here. As a matter of fact, if you look at my ground speed, which is the speed I'm traveling over the ground, I'm doing 53 knots. If you take a look at my airspeed, it will indicate that I'm traveling 110 knots. And my true airspeed, which remember is my speed that I'm moving through the air, should match up more or less, because I'm fairly low altitude here, with my actual indicated airspeed. Now, if I were to actually fly outside the airplane, let me pause for a second here, you can see that it does not look like I'm traveling 110 knots because that wind is coming straight at us and actually reducing our speed. So already you can see that this is a fairly tricky calculation. Now a really really fun trick to play. Let me get the nose up just a teeny tiny bit. We're flying a little heavy here but that's all right. Go ahead and slap that. Let me turn on altitude hold mode just to make my life just a teeny tiny bit simpler here. There we go. Looks pretty good. Now what would happen if that speed got even faster? Well let's find out. Crank this up just a little bit. Let's do 135 knots, sounds pretty good. Oh, look at that, I'm doing 136 knots. Let me go ahead and back my throttle down and look outside the plane. Yeah, does it look to me like you're doing 136 knots? It certainly does not, because we're not actually doing 130 knots. We're simply indicating that we were doing that speed. As a matter of fact, watch this. I am not in slow motion. This is no slow motion involved. <laughs> look at that. I can actually watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Put my flaps down. Give myself just a little bit of power. And look at this! I'm a helicopter! <laughs> now the reason this is even possible is that our forward speed, actually if you look I'm going backwards, my forward speed and all my thrust is being completely 100% canceled out. As a matter of fact, it's so aggressive the aircraft was actually starting to move backwards. And again, it still indicated a normal speed, even though my physical speed, which was my ground speed, indicated that I was basically not moving. You can see right now my ground speed is 21 knots, my airspeed is 102. So literally, look at how slow this aircraft is traveling. Now, here's where it gets interesting. I'm actually gonna give myself full throttle here. I'm gonna flip the direction of the wind to come from the other way. And I stall and I crash. <laughs> ah, we did. Now you're asking, why did that happen? Well, if you remember, my aircraft was only traveling that speed in the wind. When you flip the wind around, my aircraft has to come up with an extra 200 knots of speed in order to get itself airborne. So in that case, we swooshed. So now that you understand the relationship between ground speed and airspeed, let's take a look at the recent relationship between true airspeed and indicated airspeed. Now this number right here on any aircraft refers to your indicated airspeed. That's how fast the aircraft feels like it's actually traveling. The reality is that's not actually how fast the aircraft is traveling over the ground, as we found out a minute ago, nor is it how fast the aircraft is traveling through the air. You're sitting there going, wait, what? So right now I'm indicating an airspeed of 100. 25 knots. My ground speed is a total of 132 knots. You're sitting there, oh, it's that stupid wind. You forgot to shut the wind off, didn't you? Um, no. As a matter of fact, let me do you a flavor and shut it off. So now the wind is completely off, but it still shows that my current speed is 133 knots. So you're sitting there going, um, okay, what's, what, what's going on here? What, wait, how is it that my ground speed with no wind is not the same thing as my indicated airspeed? Well, there is the problem, and that is because of air pressure. If you remember, the tool on this aircraft that's actually doing this hard work here is the pitot tube. That thing is subject to all changes of both temperature as well as pressure. And since the air gets thinner as we climb, it's going to show a gradually lower and lower number as we get to both warmer or colder air as well as as we get to higher altitude. So the relationship between that is going to change completely based on your altitude. So you can see right now that I'm indicating 126 knots true air, or indicated airspeed. And I'm also showing that my actual actual speed that the aircraft is moving through the air is 134 knots. The farther up I go, the lower this number will become and the more consistent this number will become as well. As a matter of fact, it's actually possible to climb keeping this number more or less constant, which will result in this number getting so low. 
Now you're sitting there going, wait a minute, what about stalling? Am I, is the aircraft going to stall because of this? The answer is yes. This number does not matter except for the fact that you've got 133 knot wind going by my front windshield here. This number, however, the aircraft is still going to be feeling. So if this number gets very, 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 very low, even though this number is very high, you're still going to stall the aircraft, which is what makes mountain flying so darn dangerous. Now notice my ground speed and my true airspeed are completely identical. The reason for this is because there's no wind. So let's go ahead and introduce a little bit of wind here. Let's say I'll make it a tailwind. It'll get us going. Let's say we're looking for a wind coming out of the south here. We'll say a 182. We'll say 182. Now let's get everybody's favorite tailwind here. It's a 22 knot wind. There we go. 22 knots. Close that. And now notice my indicator speed went down. Because remember, I'm running from the air now as opposed to running into the air. So it's going to show a decrease. But notice my true airspeed is still showing about what it was before. Again, about 130 knots. So this is what my airplane thinks it's doing. This is what my aircraft is physically doing through the air. This is how fast my airplane is moving over the ground. So in this particular case, you can see that my ground speed is about 150 knots, which honestly, that's like a rocket ship. That's pretty freaking fast, depending of course on if we're climbing or not climbing. And you can see clearly that my airspeed actually caught back up. So let's go ahead and level the aircraft off. I know this is sort of an awkward altitude to do it, but I think it's kind of important that you kind of kind of see what this looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and level off right here. We're gonna go pick up a little bit more speed. You can see uh, my engine's suffering a little bit because the air has gotten a little bit thinner, just so you can see how dramatic this effect looks. Let's speed up time a little bit here, so we're gonna have a little bit of fun. Picking up speed, picking up speed. Notice as my indicated air speed changes, so does my true air speed, and so does my ground speed one more time. Now you're probably wondering how dramatic can this effect look? Well, let's take a look. Well, that depends on how high you're willing to fly. So in this case, uh, we brought our aircraft up to 10,000 feet. Now we're just picking up a little bit of speed here. And you can see my indicated air speed is about 124 knots. So keep in mind, since we have about a third of the, uh, two thirds of the atmosphere that we had at lower altitudes, I expect this to be not quite two thirds, almost a quarter less than my true airspeed. So in this case, I'm showing 130 knots. The physical aircraft is moving 154 knots. However, my ground speed is 178 knots. Now, if I were to continue flying higher and higher and higher, this indicated airspeed would continue to decrease and this would stay fairly constant. Now for aircraft that use conventional pistons like this particular version of the G36 Bonanza, the higher I go, the less air I have available for my engine. I actually lose performance because I'm going up so darn high like I am right this second. If I continue to do so, eventually I'll basically run out of performance and I won't be able to climb at all. So unfortunately that doesn't work. You know, it's not a viable strategy to keep climbing forever. As a matter of fact, if I climbed up any higher, really, um, the aircraft would not even climb. It would just run out of energy completely. So it's actually very interesting how that works. Now the last type of speed we're going to take a look at today is called CAS. That's also known as calibrated airspeed. Now here's an interesting fact. Um, when we put something inside of a little wing over here, that little pitot tube kind of chilling over there, um, you're going to have some issues with installation. Because of the way the air interacts, because of the angle of attack, you're actually going to get a different speed than the actual correct indicated airspeed. So if I had a pitot tube, for example, that was kind of sitting here like this and I was about to stall, my speed would show zero even though the aircraft is not traveling zero because the air does not enter into that tube accurately. Don't get this thing confused with the pitot tube. The pitot tube is this little thing right here. You just can't see it. So because of that, we have another type of speed that's called calibrated airspeed. So what would happen is, and this gets really old really quick, is we would get our normal speed, we go into our little POH, we'd read this speed versus the altitude versus the angle of attack, and then we would know what our actual speed is. Then we could use that actual speed to calculate our true airspeed after we've corrected for altitude and temperature, and then if we knew what the wind was, we'd be able to calculate for our ground speed, which in this case is 200 knots right now because of that tailwind. Whoa, that seems like a lot of work. So then one of the nice things about these modern systems is I can just look over here and I know exactly what my ground speed is. The other thing is I can come down here, I can come over here, boop, and know exactly what my wind is. In the old days, you had to calculate these things using conventional round instruments quickly. I'm not saying that today's pilots have it any better than classic pilots, but man, I can't tell you how tedious that was to try to do while still navigating the plane at the same time. Okay, hopefully this video was helpful as far as making you realize the differences between all those different speeds. And again, the critical thing here is the aircraft feels the speed, no matter what you see. And of course, it's actually traveling at this speed or truly this speed, which is going to be its ground speed there. Hopefully this is helpful. Uh, some of you are probably going, yeah, what is Mach? A Mach is percentage of the speed of the sound. Remember, speed of sound changes based on air density. So what'll happen is as you climb up, even though you're showing that you're only doing say 250 knots, the reality is you're traveling close to 400 
450, 500 knots. And as a result, once you get to that certain altitude, it's almost easier to see percentage of Mach rather than relying on indicated airspeed for any sort of approaches. Uh, the next question everybody always asks is, if I'm landing at an alt airstrip that's at 10,000 feet, do I still use indicated airspeed? The answer is yes, absolutely still use indicated airspeed because the aircraft feels this distance. And last but not least, the real pros will say, okay, so I know what you're trying to say with all this. You know, this is kind of helpful. I didn't know all this, but um, what about density altitude? Ah, oh, you're so mean. Altitude is for another day. But basically what they're saying is at high temperatures, basically even though your altitude could be indicated as one thing and your airspeed could be indicated, the aircraft itself feels the effect of those high temperatures and it actually reduces your performance even further. Nobody said that this flying thing was easy. You know, we take a lot of this stuff for granted. We just kind of get in and go. But the one time you get bit by it, you're going to know. Enjoy.